listen to the new album. I've got to say congratulations. Oh, thank you so much, man. So, I was wondering if we could start off by talking a little bit about what you guys were setting out to achieve with this album. It's been such a big couple of years for you guys. What were you setting out to achieve with this album? Well, I think that especially this album, as far as the development of the band and where it's come from, like this really does sort of span the, the time with which we've all spent together as musicians. Like, there's tunes on this album and it's accompanying follow-up album, which will hopefully be out in about 12 months as well, that we've had on the cards for like nearly a decade at this point. So it really is a bit of a culmination of all of the all of the time that we've spent together as musicians and sort of all the things that we've gone through together and, you know, different selections of lineups and even different bands and stuff like that. It uh, Yeah, it means a lot to us as far as time and stuff is concerned. Yeah. Now, this is a two-part concept album. Tell us a little bit about the concept and what you, how you guys have gone about choosing that as the concept for these albums. So, more or less, I think the 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 albums are supposed to sort of symbolize like a coming of age story, like you being able to accept the wrongdoings of yourself and those around you in the earlier parts of your life and find the things that you need to be able to hold on to to be able to get you through the, the tougher times. Uh, as far as like a sort of a lyrical concept that crosses the whole album. In terms of the music though, similar to the sort of things that we've done in the past as far as the band, like if you've even listened to some of the singles and stuff that have come out from the album, you'll notice that there's like motivic ideas and some melodies that do tend to sort of crop their head throughout all of the songs and throughout the album, which sort of tie the whole thing together nicely. We um, generally like to write and uh, approach our music from the perspective of people being able to listen to it all in sort of one big sitting and experience it all as sort of one one big story. So being able to hear those little motifs and those little ideas cropping up is, uh, yeah, like we find it nice to write like that and we hope people sort of find it as exciting to listen and sort of find those things as they crop up. Definitely. Lyrically, it's a really, really deep and personal um, album. Tell us a little bit about what that was like sitting down and reading through Charlie's lyrics after he'd worked on them. It's, um, it's, uh, sometimes it becomes... Uh, sometimes, I suppose, when you sort of don't... You won't see him for a week or two and you know that he's just sort of like badgering away and working on some of these songs in the background and then he comes up with some of the stuff that he comes up with. You either you know, you're somewhere between elated that he's been able to come up with this absolutely beautiful story or absolutely concerned that something terrible is going on because it does really, you know, touch on some deeper parts of, uh, of life and of, of the sort of human experience, I guess. But, uh, yeah, definitely the first time I remember, uh, there's one of the singles, if you've listened to the whole album, Cats, that hasn't been released yet for everyone else, but, uh, I remember the first time I heard that, specifically that song, I was just like bawling my eyes out by the time we got to the end of it. There's just something about the lyrics of that one and uh, sort of all of us just being able to um, come together and sort of say something very strong in that song for me anyway. It was, uh, yeah, that's a real special one for me lyrically anyway. Yeah. Now, with the the two albums that are going to link together, have you actually already sat down and, and written all of the tracks for the two albums or... How far along are you with the music for the second album as well? So pretty much we have had... So before uh, before this album was sort of finalised in its structure, we had nearly three albums worth of material fully recorded except for vocals. So like everything like uh, final mix for uh, guitars, drums, bass, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then sort of in meeting uh, the, the guys wild thing and sort of having the experiences that we've been been given over the last couple of months and the bands have been able to play with obviously uh, uh minds have been opened a little bit and the uh, uh the experiences and the conversations we have with those guys have sort of swayed and changed the way we've viewed the music so a couple of songs have uh, ended up on the cutting room floor hey, but if this album's anything to go by then i'm sure that they won't not get used in the future but uh yeah, so all of album two, except for except for vocals, essentially is uh, is pretty much all there, ready to go. So once this one's out and this one's all finished, and we we ride this one out for a little while, then it's it's really not going to be too far off for album two to be rearing its head. Yeah. Now talking about writing this album out, how has things changed for you guys with this album 
coming out while we're kind of still in lockdown at the moment. How has that affected things for you? Uh, well, obviously, well, like, as, as we speak, we would have been in the airport about to get on a plane over uh, over to the States to play play with um, Caligula's Horse on their US tour, which is a bit of a bummer. But yeah. uh, as far as the album and stuff is concerned, I feel like yeah, at this point, we're really just keen and have it be out in the world like it has been quite a long time coming and we have been sitting on it for such a long time that sort of regardless of the situation we're just going to be really happy that it's finally going to be out there it's kind of going to be out of our hands so to speak and the rest of the world can just sort of uh you know accept it you know take it to what they want and then we can start moving on to to bigger and better things like even album two at this point is starting to you know develop and grow and maybe even become something else which is pretty exciting so Maybe having being able to have this one go out, regardless of sort of the state of everything, and just sort of be finished with it to some degree, was is going to be really nice. I think. Yeah, having that tour to the US cancelled must be heartbreaking for you guys. Do you know if it's going to be rescheduled, or can you not even look that far in the future at the moment because things are changing day by day? Yeah, exactly right. The the, the word has constantly always been rescheduled. Like we've never. The word cancellation has never cropped up in any conversations with anyone, which is always a very positive way to view it. But obviously, everything is quite tumultuous, especially over in the states at the moment with uh, with public safety and just being able to make sure that even if we felt comfortable doing it, that everyone that would want to come to the shows would feel just as comfortable as well. Um, so we just we really do just need to play it by ear, and obviously it's. Uh, it, it, it is it is a bit of a it is a bit frustrating having put all this time into into something and been so excited about it. But you know everyone in the whole world is experiencing this at the moment, and I think when you when you put it into perspective of it's you know it, it's one tour hopefully of many that we'll be able to embark on. Definitely, uh, it does put it into perspective a little bit. Yeah, and how has lockdown been for you? Because I know for some musos, it's been a time when they've been really, really creative and they've worked on a lot of music. But for other people, it's been a time to kind of like tune out and just reset. How have you spent the lockdown so far? Uh, it's been. It, it's actually been so nice, in all honesty, just to have a little bit of a break between the music and um, uh, and all the work that we do outside of that to obviously fund the music and keep that all going just to have some time to really just sit down, even just to do some super basic practice and stuff and just be able to sit down and just play music for the fun of it, like I suppose a lot of people were able to do in their youth and might not be able to do as much now. It's just really refreshing. Like you said, it's a really good opportunity to just sort of reset, recharge the batteries a little bit and hopefully just come out guns blazing on the other side. Yeah, we've been asking bands on our, when they've come on our show how your fans can help you out at the moment. How can your fans help you out financially at the moment aside from buying the album? Is there anything else that they can do for you guys? Well, look, like we're, in, in, in all honesty, we're probably in the boat of uh, there's probably bigger fish in the world. We'd much rather you, you know, have a listen to the music and throw some money going towards a charity or something like that that's going to help out some people that are probably far more in need than we are but there's obviously the pre-orders for the album and stuff and uh even just going through and saving the album on spotify or anything like that means the world to us and it really does uh it really does help us out so even just those little things are definitely something we'd appreciate from everybody yeah definitely and bringing it back to the album you guys self-produced this one as well tell us a little bit about that choice to go into this album self-producing it rather than bringing a producer on board well, I suppose uh, ever since Evan Ivory and even bands before it, it's always been a very in-house thing. Like it's been, I think, an aspect of the creative process is knowing that it's it's only our hands that we're dirty with the product, I suppose, for, for want of a better term. So we're constantly, every time we're working on something new, we're constantly all learning something new. We're constantly bringing new skills to the party and, you know, we're always, looking for new things that we can do to expand our, our knowledge as a band and how far we can take the production side of things and how far we can take everything. So I think at this point, after this album, I think maybe that process might change a little bit. I think having had this one been sat on for so long, not so much as a bad thing, but just as a result of 
you know, new things coming up and new opportunities cropping up and then the album gets delayed a little bit, we get another tour offer and the album gets delayed a little bit more. Um, I think maybe being on someone else's timeline next time, even just as a single experience, would be would be very interesting and I think might even might even benefit the next release to some degree. So yeah, definitely not a not against the idea of bringing someone else on as a as a second voice for the next album. Definitely. Well, mate, I guess to finish up, is there anything you would like to say to our listeners out there before they go out and grab a copy of The Long Dream? Look, I think the the, the, the most important thing I think we as a band are trying to do with this album is just to give people a little bit of an insight into, into us and hopefully if there are some people out there that are going to resonate with the lyrics or resonate with the songs in some way that makes them feel like, you know, they're not alone in any of this or any of the crazy stuff that we all go through, then that's all that we can hope for. So we just hope people enjoy it when it does come out. Definitely. Well, mate, again, congratulations on an absolutely fantastic album, and we wish you guys all the best of luck going from here as well. Thank you so, so much, man. You have a lovely day. You too. Thank you so much, mate. Bye. Cheers, man. Bye.